the Takumi developed a new technique for bonding the touch panel substrate to the cover glass. Let's see how it's done. The touch panel substrate and the cover glass are both made of glass. So we'll use these two sheets of glass to demonstrate. Try to stick these two together as closely as possible by hand. One sheet has glue on it. When I put the two sheets together by hand... Oh no! Look what happened! There are air bubbles everywhere. A touch panel conducts electricity, so it won't respond well if there is air in between. It also looks bad, so it's no good as a product. A touch panel that responds to a swipe of your finger is made by combining a liquid crystal display with a touch panel substrate and a cover glass. When your finger touches the touch panel, it works like a ground wire. The electric charge is too small to feel, yet is enough to detect which part of the screen is touched. However, the slightest amount of air between the touch panel and the cover glass disrupts the electric charge and reduces its sensitivity. A glass bonding technique was needed. This is what the Takumi developed. This is the newly developed machine. What kind of machine is it? The glass is set in place and the machine is switched on. Oh, first the glass is rotated to the other side and now there's a roller that's coming down and it's rolling over the two glass sheets. Oh, and it's come back. Wow, it's... the glass is... Oh, perfectly now. When compared to the glass that I joined by hand, the difference is obvious. Until now, conventional machines join the glass sheets in a vacuum environment to prevent air from getting in. However, the vacuum would cause the glue to boil and form air bubbles. This caused 30 to 40 percent of all early smartphones to be defective. The loss was too large to ignore. The Takumi's company had the technique needed to bond sheets together without a vacuum, so an electrical manufacturer asked the Takumi to develop a system. The Takumi's technique was to use a roller to press soft films together while also pushing air out. My company was going through a difficult time after the collapse of Lehman Brothers in 2008. I was eager to work on a new technique. Yet bonding glass together was quite different from bonding soft films together, and the Takumi had no previous experience with it. Then the Takumi made a discovery. I found that it bends quite a lot. Look at this. Well, it's very flexible. With this much elasticity, I felt that it would be possible to stably bond them together. The Takumi's idea was to bend the glass in the same way as the film and roll the air out while the sheets are being joined together. Yet objections were raised at the thought of the glass being handled in this manner. Wouldn't it crack? Wouldn't it warp? These were just a few of the questions that were raised. However, the Takumi was unmoved. I gave it a go because I felt that innovations were being overlooked because people weren't willing to try something new. Let's review how the Takumi's machine works. The glass on top is tilted slightly as the sheets are glued together. A roller pushes out the air as it presses the two sheets together. There is no cracking or warping, and the defect rate was reduced to under 1%. The Takumi ignored the rule that said pieces were not to be bent and developed a technique that made it possible for them to bond glass pieces in an ordinary non-vacuum environment. 
In the beginning, no company wanted to use this machine. The machine didn't sell at first. Then it began to slowly take off. And now, it's highly regarded in the industry. I made something unique, and I'm very happy that it is appreciated. I don't think mid-sized companies can survive by continuing business as usual. I think it's really important to have something that sets you apart from others. An American IT company is working on a device that charges smartphones by placing a pad under a desk. Getting rid of cables, that's what we're trying to do. 